recording. And here we go. And five, four, three, two. Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here again for Visual Micro, doing another Visual Micro tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about probably, well, at least in my opinion, the coolest feature of the Visual Micro plugin, and that is the Arduino USB debugger, which is a feature of the fully paid plugin. Now, if you've ever written Arduino code and you've gotten an error, you, your first thought was probably to create some sort of serial debugging system to print out variables or messages depending on where you are in the code. Now, what this add-on add-in to the plugin does is that it will assen it essentially does that. It creates uh, serial messages for you, and you can create the messages however you want. But instead of you having to write the serial code yourself, the plugin does it for you by using Atmel and Visual Studio's built-in breakpoint system. So again, cleans up a lot of things. Now, this tutorial is going to be one of two. This is going to be meant, be meant to introduce people into debugging using breakpoints, how they work, and the basics of how to get Visual Micro to do what you want to do or what you're used to doing by using your serial commands. And gonna have another video which goes into more of the bells and whistles, some of the cooler things you can do. Uh, get a lot of more power out of this plugin. So with that, let's go ahead and just jump right in. So I've got uh, some basic code right here. Just most basic code you can have. Void setup, void loop, nice and easy. Now there are two ways you can initialize the debugger. The first is the global method. Uh, you do that by going to Tools, Options, and then you go to Visual Micro, General. And then about a third of the way down the page is going to be always use debugger. Now this is going to be your preference. Um, I prefer to set it to false. If you set it to true, it means that no matter when you go to upload your code, it's always going to set it into debug mode. So it's always going to open all the debugger windows. Again, I'll, I leave it to false, and you'll I, I'll show you my preference. But if you want to leave it to true, that's again your own taste. So if you don't do that what you do is you go to your Solution Explorer, which if you don't see, it's View, uh, Solution Explorer. And then you click on the project, which should open the Project Properties. If it doesn't, View Properties window. And at, all the way at the bottom of that is the Micro Debug. Now, this lets you set the debug status for a particular build configuration. Now, if you've not done stuff with Visual Micro or Visual, er, uh, not Visual Micro, Visual Studio or uh, Atmel Studio, what you can do is have essentially two different codes: one for debug and one for release. And that's set by this little drop-down right here. So in debug mode, what I can do is I can set this to debug, and then I go to the properties, and I'll set this to full, so that whenever I switch to the debug configuration it will run all the debugging breakpoints I have and I can debug code. If I switch it to release, the debugger is not turned on and it will not run with all, any of the breakpoints. So you don't have to, when you go to uh, give the code or when you go to release the code, you don't have to be worried about all of the debugging code you had left in or forgot about leaving in. You can have the good, the debugging build and the final build all kept together in one file. So it's very nice, very easy. So that's how I leave it set. Release is set to none and debug is set to full. So with that let's just go ahead and upload this code to the Arduino. I'm using the debug build here. Hit F5. You can see down here it says compiling debug version. And then you should get two windows t that pop up if you haven't tweaked any of your if you haven't tweaked any of your settings. Now what you get is a serial port and you get a uh, debugger expressions. You can add more windows by clicking right here and other windows. You can watch expressions. There is an A gauge example. Uh, don't worry about that just yet. That's for the next video. We'll get to that. Watch, ex uh, watch expressions is this window right here. And as you can see, it's printing out the millisecond timer, and it's giving you the current millisecond, the min, the max. You can add other things to this. You can see it in binary hex. You can see the number of times it's hit. Talk about that in just a second. Uh, the time when it was started, and the location. Function doesn't work because it 
Atmel Studio doesn't realize that you're using a slightly different thing being programmed in an Arduino, so it doesn't quite work the same way. So some of the function, remember that this is using breakpoint functionality that's built in, so it's not written by a Visual Micro, so there are some shortcomings. So I'm just going to close this and show you what's going on. Now, when you ran this for the first time, you probably got this breakpoint right here. That's this little red dot. A breakpoint is it's what happens when you step through line by line, and every time you come to that point, the breakpoint, the program will break and it will do something. So there are a couple things you can do. Uh, let's see what this does. So when hit, when it hits this breakpoint, when it comes back up to the top of the loop, what's it going to do? it's going to print millis and by putting it in the curly brackets it's going to print the value of millis it's not just going to print the word millis which is going to come in useful later come in use later um, there's a condition attached to it you can see that this will only print something if millis is both is greater than zero or millis is greater than one and that's it will only do it if it's true you can uh, hit count when you will it will print that message when the hit count is a multiple of 250 meaning every 250th time it hits this breakpoint it will then do the when hit so now you can enable the breakpoint uh, you can delete the breakpoint or you can disable the breakpoint those are the three things you can do so if you want to leave things in you can just hit disable breakpoint if you want to enable it, you can hit that. There is a global way to do it. it you can toggle a breakpoint, you can delete all breakpoints, or you can disable all breakpoints. Useful feature. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to just disable this, and let's create a disable breakpoint. Let's create a new variable, int i equals 0. And in the loop, I'm going to say i++. Plus plus and then I'm going to put in a delay of a thousand milliseconds. And then I'm going to click here and create a breakpoint. Now I right click on the breakpoint and I'm going to go to when hit. And I'm going to say print message. Now you got a couple choices as to what you can do. I can obviously do this. Hello world. World, I can spell. Hit OK, and if I upload this, every time it hits it, if I go to the output and I output, you can see it prints hello world every time it hits that. Every time it hits the hits the hits the I plus plus, it, it will do that. I can also oh, I should put, oops, sorry. I can probably get rid of that for a second. I can make it print the value of x by putting it in curly brackets. And if I run that again, oh, I just realized it's i, not x. I can make it print the value of i. There we go. Try that again. Now, when I make it print the variable, if I look in the output, you can see it's i equals this. But I can also look at the debugger expressions window, which tells me the data, the min, the max, all those previous things. So anytime you print just the variable, it's going to show up in the expressions window. So this is your way of watching variables as it's known. So you can keep watch of any number of variables. So if I were to close this, create a function, we'll call it function. And in this very in this function we create a variable x and we just say x plus plus. I can put another breakpoint here. And I can say when hit hit, print the value of x. And I'll call function here. And if I run that again. And wait for the to be there we go. So we can see x and i. So you can watch two different variables, and it will tell you the locations where they are in the code, which is very handy if you've got a lot of breakpoints. You can also click 
directly on it to or, yeah to bring you directly to that breakpoint in the output window. You can from the serial port you can pause the debugging. You can start the debugging again. Or you can stop it altogether instead of just having to close the window. So there's that. Uh, let's go more into the conditional things. So when this is hit, when this is hit, it's going to print the value of i. You can add other conditions to this so that you don't have to create an if loop here or an if statement here. So I can say condition if uh, i mod two is zero. So essentially if uh, i is even. If I run that again. Oh, function was not declared in the scope. Whoops. There we go. So now if we watch it, it should only print even values of i. Two, four, six, eight. Uh, that appears to be working. You can also check the hit count. Uh, break always, or um, break when the hit count is equal to a specific number. Break when the hit count is a multiple of, or break when the hit count is greater than or equal to. So this is a good way of checking how many times you're going through a certain thing, or a certain function, how many times you're updating a variable. All this very useful stuff that you'd have to normally create a serial, a serial print statement to manage, now is just handled by breakpoints. So it's all, again, very nice, very easy, and makes your workflow a lot better. Now, if you go to the debugger tab, or you, that's my file. If you go to the debugger, yeah, is that if you go to your project properties, there we go. If you go to your project properties, and if you scroll off right here, you can set a startup message. So you can tweak some of the, this is getting into the more advanced things. I'll save a lot of these for later. But you can set a startup message. You can give yourself a little wait time between startup. You can throttle how many things come through, but again, that's getting into the more advanced things. Trying to keep it simple. Just giving you a little taste of what's to come. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of the debugger. So you can, by adding these breakpoints in places you want to test various things, or various elements of your code, you can have them then printed out to your, um, your expression watcher, your variable watcher, so you can keep track of everything. So again, it makes debugging your code a lot easier and a lot simpler. So I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.